What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for being here. This is the Bloom Creative Company YouTube channel where we break down how to most easily manage your Squarespace site in tutorial videos for you. And then occasionally we'll step up the strategy and help you level up in your site too. If this is your first time, thank you so much for being here. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss anything in the future. And if you've been here before, I just wanna take a second to thank you all who have made comments on the videos, they've been super helpful and I just really appreciate the feedback we've been getting because we have been very hard at work making more videos for you all. So today's video, I wanna talk about site speed. This is a common question that I'm getting a ton about how to improve the speed in your site, how to make sure it loads quicker, how to not lose traffic while they're waiting there for the site to load. So there's a couple things that we can do, but I just wanna to say to start off, Squarespace, you're paying them a subscription and your site should be quick. That is all part of the package. But when we start developing our sites and putting more components in the sites, that's what is going to slow it down. So things like embedding too many videos or having a ton of third party integrations and things like really large image files put in blogs, multiple images and blogs or all of your sites. So I want to break down a bunch of these uh, really quickly just to show you how to improve the site speed all things that you can do on your end and it'll help either improve the site speed in your site or just make sure that you're maintaining. So let's hop on a screen share. First thing that you should probably do before you just assume that your site speed is slow is to test it. So if you're on a web browser and you're testing your site and you're seeing that it's loading slowly, that's a good telltale sign. But another good way is to test it. So I recommend this site right here, tools.pingdom.com, and we'll put the link in the notes too so you can find it super easily. This will tell you which pages have kind of some errors or things to look at um, when it comes to near DNS settings, your SSL, what's on the page, what's slowing it down, and what can be improved. So that is the first step to test it. Now, after you test it and it's time to make some changes, here are, we're just gonna go quickly through a couple of things here that you can do to best make sure that your site loads quickly because one, it's better for SEO. I know we all keep hearing about SEO and it's so important to be found, but it's also good for keeping people on your site. I mean, your audience wants things now. They want things immediately. And if they don't get that instant gratification, they will bounce from your site. So we want to make sure things are as easy as possible, move as seamlessly as possible, and just give them a great experience because your website is serving a purpose, right? So we want to make sure everything is as fluid as possible. So first thing here is images. Now, well, let me back up. So I have built thousands of sites. Me and my team have built thousands of sites at this point. And it is very rare that we find slow sites, uh, slow loading, because one, you're you're paying a subscription to Squarespace and Squarespace is supposed to be working hard for you and they are. So site speed is one of those things that is going to come with your site, but there are things that you can do that will bog down your website. So the first thing is images. If you are uploading really high res images all over your site, like for example, I worked with a client once that was doing these amazing blogging of local female farmers on the East Coast. And she wrote these novels, which had these beautiful images, but she was putting 20 images per blog post in these high resolution images. And we found very soon that that was really slowing down her site. So what we did is we compressed the images and made them better suited for her website so that they would load quickly. So there's two ways that I handle image sizing. The first way is the way I upload an image. So here's just a regular stock image I found on Unsplash. And in my computer, I will go to Tools. I'm on a Mac. I hit Adjust Size. And like right now, you can see the width of this is 4,032 pixels by uh, 2268. So usually you'll get a notification from Squarespace saying that the file is way too large and you need to change the size. So this is one quick way to do it. If you make the file size too small, you might compromise some of the quality depending on how you're using the image, whether it's a banner image or just um, a, a normal image on the page. So what I always defer to is just making it 2000 width in the pixels. If you are between 1500 and 2000, that is what's preferred on Squarespace. So I'll just hit okay. It's going to resize it. It looks a little small here, but if I uploaded it into 
my site, it's not going to look small. It'll actually look really crisp and clean as a banner image. So that is one way to change the size. The next way is compressor.io. So this is what my team and I use. We'll drop in an image and we'll compress it to a PNG. Now, another, another tip of advice, PNG or JPEG are the best file types to put your image on your website. So if you stick to those two image types, you're good to go. And then this is just an option for you to compress your images into just the best working size for your site. Because if you are a blog or have a bunch of gallery pages for your art, for example, you want to display those nicely, but you also don't want to slow down your site speed. So that is the first step. Um, another thing that you can do that's super quick and will give you just kind of like a really quick win is if you head to settings and advanced SSL, you just want to make sure that these two are checked off. Um, it's really techy and a lot of techno babble, but just know your site security is really important. And if you check those two, that is going to make a really quick difference for you. Now, the next, uh, the next one is CSS or code. So sometimes we can't get away without having some code embedded on our sites, but you just want to be mindful how much you do, because if you have all these different third-party apps, like you have intercom for your chat box and you have code blocks going to other sites or another code block for a membership, the more you put code blocks in your site, the more your site is going to slow down. So you just want to be mindful and just be strategic about how you put code in your site because what I like to tell people, especially if you're starting out, start simple, validate your concept, proof of concept, make sure it's what your audience wants because you can have all the bells and whistles, but if it's not tested and people aren't drawn to it and people aren't validating your idea, you're going to be wasting a lot of time, one, managing your site and all these platforms, and two, you will have just wasted a ton of your time setting something up that you had no proof of concept. So highly, highly recommend starting small, find workarounds. That's what we like to do with our clients is just making sure that we keep it simple, make sure that it's manageable and easy to update and manage while you're growing. So when you do hire that assistant one day, that can be your assistant's job to figure out how to manage all those platforms while you just focus on growing your business, right? So that's another quick one, video. So when I go here in my site, click edit, scrolling down, I have my video here that links to uh, our SEO simplified video on YouTube. A really good best practice if you are embedding a ton of videos, add a custom thumbnail. So I'm gonna click use custom thumbnail. I have my, I have it waiting right here. It's actually a different thumbnail for that video, but you get the point. I'm just gonna upload that image use custom thumbnail. It's going to process and resize. And then that will help with your site loading. So if I had a dedicated page to my 10 most recent YouTube videos, I would add that custom thumbnail just for that quicker page processing. And then lastly is fonts. So it's really nice to have the creative freedom to add different fonts and make things really personal and unique and branded, but best practice, just pick one font. And what I like to do is in my header font, I like to make it bold. And then my paragraph font is a little bit less bold. So that's how I kind of mix up and give a little more variety to the pages. Um, especially if it's very text heavy site, lots of going on. I mean, sometimes, like I said, you can't help all the different integrations that you put in, but if you do have a lot going on, just stick to one font or just a web font that um, just runs smoothly on your site. So one to two fonts for your site as a whole, don't get too crazy, and then that will help your site as well. Uh, but that's about it. Um, those are some quick things. There will be a link in the notes for uh, a PDF of all these quick things, just a quick checklist, and you can check them off. Make sure you, you've got everything down and make sure your site is super quick. So thank you so much for being here.
I hope you all got a ton of value out of that video. Please let us know what you thought. Also, do me a favor, smash that subscribe button and like the video. If you have any follow-up questions, I'm in the questions every day answering for all of you guys that do have follow-up questions. We just wanna make sure you're super successful with your site and you're making money and, and doing great things with your site. So thank you again for being here. I'm Elizabeth Muller with Bloom Creative Company, a Squarespace design agency, and we'll see you on the next video.